be so it's okay i understand what you're saying all right good morning i'd like to welcome everyone to the atchison county commission meeting for tuesday november 21st i'd like to call the meeting to order and please welcome sister barbara mccracken for invocation <clears throat> Just take one moment of breath here and, and be aware of our presence, of the people around us, and of God's great love for each of us. From nothing, O oh Lord, our Creator, you fashioned the heavens and the earth and framed the human family from the dust of the ground. Infinite in love, you made us in your image, endowing us with immortal dignity. And you inscribed on each heart that sacred call to labor with you in the just ordering of our community and world. In our freedom, O oh God, help us to find and practice virtue. And in our abundance, enable us to attend to those unloved and unmourned. Grant us, gracious one, to never tire in using our talents, intellect, wit, and liberty in the renewal of our society according to your law. Teach us, O God, to walk justly and humbly before you. We ask this in the name of love made flesh, Jesus our Lord. And we ask special prayers today for the situation in the Holy Land and especially for the women and children in Gaza. Amen. 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 Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sister. Yes. Okay. In Atchison County Committee meeting minutes from November 13th. Did you guys have a chance to read the minutes from the 13th? I watched the meeting and I read the minutes. Okay. So I would move to approve. Okay. I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. All right, Commissioner Comments, Commissioner Noll? Um, I don't have anything today, thank you. Okay, Commissioner Rico? Uh, yeah, I'd just like to thank uh, Sheriff Flory for uh, setting in for me to do the canvas. I appreciate that. Um, I wasn't trying to be derelict of my duty, but I was out of here. So, um, also a shout out to the election workers and uh, the county clerk uh, and uh, Kay Kaylee for all the work they did in the election. So, I think this was mentioned. Um, I think that's it. Okay. Yeah. All right. I have not heard comments today. Um... Okay, so we will have an executive session um, at 10.04 for 30 minutes. Non-elected personnel with the county commission, um, the county attorney, and HR. Um, so, no Eric's not here. Do you have that verbiage, Eric? Or... Yes, I do. Just give me okay, a moment. Okay, great. Thank you. <clears throat> Say personnel matters. Uh, yeah, non-elected personnel. Thirty minutes. Um, okay. Starting at ten oh four. County attorney, HR, and commission. Okay. <laughs> I'll move the board of county commissioners recess into executive session at ten oh four uh, a.m. to discuss personnel matters of non-elected personnel as allowed by KSA 75-4319B1. And that the purpose of the closed session is to protect the privacy rights of the employee and that the board come out of executive session in 30 minutes in the commission room, uh, courthouse basement, or in my case, Zoom. And those present will be the three commissioners, uh, county attorney and HR. Hey, I will second. second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to seven. I can't remember which one we used last one. It, the volume is this one. Can you hear me now? 
<laughs> yep. Thank you. Now you're now we're unmuted. Um you're still good at 11, right? How much time did you need? Just 15 minutes? At 11? Yeah. Well, I well, no, at 11, I know you have an hour, but because yeah. we were doing an hour workshop. Yes. But did you need a purchase order approval department update? How much time did you need for them? Maybe 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Okay. Maybe because right. I just got. Um, I'd like to do attorney client um, executive session for 15 minutes. Now? Yeah. <clears throat> with Mishner's Pat and Jody. Okay. Yeah, I will move, I'll move that the Board of County Commissioners recess an executive session at 10.35 a.m. for consultation with an attorney for the public body, which would be deemed privileged in the attorney-client relationship as allowed by KSA 75-4319B2, and that the purpose of the closed session is to protect the confidentiality of the discussion, and that the board come out of executive session in uh, 15 minutes in the commission room courthouse, and those present will be three commissioners, uh, Pat Henderson and Jody Moore. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Good. Yep. Well, yep. Uh, I would move to extend the executive session for additional 10 minutes. Uh, We'll take us to 1101. Okay, I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. That's not that very. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we are back in open session, and I would look for a motion, or I will make a motion to authorize T.S. Connard to do an assessment of Atchison County's IT department um, and our overall assessment. Network. Network, sorry. The, um, do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Joe Snyder Road and Bridge Superintendent. How's everyone today? Good. How are you? Good. Ooh, I might have broke the chair. I have a PO for Aspen Equipment. This is to uh, replace the cable assembly on the uh, crane truck that we had talked about. And it's for seven thousand nine hundred eighty-six dollars and sixty-four cents. Way better. That's uh, awesome. better than the twenty. Yeah, that's the original estimate. For if, okay. to do okay. everything was twenty-one thousand. That's right. So and then we're able to not have to do the whole thing. Yes. Okay. That's, that's awesome. I'd look for a motion to approve the purchase order as presented from the Road and Bridge Superintendent in the amount of seven thousand nine hundred eighty-six dollars and sixty-four cents to Aspen Equipment. So move. Okay. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Uh, I also have the notice to notice of award for Ebert Construction on the uh, MHS site two, which you guys okayed last week. Yeah. It needs yeah. to be signed. Did I send that in? Yeah, I have a copy. You've got it. Or... Right. Okay. That's just the chair signs. Yeah. Um, well. Yeah, and the contractor. Yeah. Or you could authorize Joe to sign it. Whichever you prefer. I would just assume you sign okay, it. Okay, perfect. So I'd look for a motion um, to allow the chair to sign notice of award to Ebert Construction um, in the amount of $173,491.43. For the Ottawa Road Culvert Replacement Improvements. So moved. Okay. 
Second. And moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Three to zero. Uh, just a quick on the update. The fall patching, they got half of it done, and now the weather is probably going to be the where they'll have to come back in the spring. So, uh, and when I walked the roads after harvest, they were a lot worse. So I had to add some some more. Uh, when we get to this spring, when I get to where, if it looks like it's going to be more than what the original was, I'll come to you guys and and uh, talk to you about that. But I know that uh, Ottawa and Osage definitely had quite a bit more that we needed to fix. So um, other than that, we're just working on everything day to day. We're going on a lot of bridges right now, a lot. It's just one after another after another. So mostly planks or is there issues? Yeah, and then does somebody on the Donovan County line hit a guardrail and busted it off and the guys are up there trying to get it fixed right now? Uh, like a vehicle or a farm equipment? We don't know. Oh. That's another one of those. We hit it and we'll see you later, you know. So, uh, but that's that's kind of what's going on. We're getting all of our snow equipment, uh, getting the lights. Everything else has been calibrated. All the trucks have been calibrated, and we had to do some work on on some of that. And uh, we should be should be prepared. They're getting working on lights again today. So, in case something comes up, we've got. Uh, quite a bit of salt, and we've got some sand. They're hauling more sand today, so we'll be prepared. So, okay. all right. Um, we also uh, handled a request for qualifications um, for consultants to help us with the development of site plan for a new road and bridge facility. Um, we scored those um, based on the <clears throat> qualifications that they sent in, and I would look for a motion to obtain a proposal from BG Consultants for services um, to get an estimated uh, cost. Do I have a motion to move forward? Yeah, so moved. Okay. Do I have a second? <clears throat> Been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Taxes three to zero. Okay. So we are going to adjourn into a workshop until 12 um, with Road and Bridge. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Recess into workshop. Sorry, not adjourn. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Sorry. You're right. Sorry. Yeah. Recess. <laughs> okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. This is three to zero. <laughs> okay, we are back in open session. And we received a copy of the EMS Commission report for October 2023. I'd look for a motion to um, approve and file. So um, moved. Second. Okay. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded and moved and seconded. So all of those in favor say aye. 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 Four of them. Pass this to zero. <laughs> um, I also had an Atchison County Extension Council a uh, budget that was in our blue folder um, in the amount of 200, let's see, total expenditures, 245,570. Um, we appropriated $168,534. Michelle Phillips um, had a certificate of appropriation on October 31st. Um, and it just needs a signature of a representing board of county commissioners. So I guess I would look for a motion to allow the chair to sign um, this document. It's something that's signed every year for the extension council. Sorry. It's just their budget. They have to bring it in to us. And then you guys just sign off on it that says yes. That it was, was, sorry. And then they it send was, it to the And then they send it to K-State. Uh, yeah, they actually send it out. I understand. Yeah. So then Yeah. Okay. Is Eric seems no, it was just no. it was in the blue folder. It was in there oh. last week too. Eric, do you mean to take a picture of this to send it to you? It's just their budget. I yeah, I bet I'm gonna decline. Okay. Okay. Um so I'll second. So it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh all those. I mean, I, I would, I anticipated, sorry, I'm going to vote negative. 
Okay. So motion passes two to one. Sorry, I haven't had one of those. Just writing at the same time. Sorry. <laughs> And is the gentleman from SLIB? Okay, Mark's yep. on. Nick's on. Nick's on. Good. Awesome. All right, so we are going to go over the three offers for Senior Village and discuss mm -hmm. them. Sure. This is uh, this is Nick Ketchabando with SLIB. Um, did you want me to kind of start things off, or did you want to start with questions on on the offers. Uh, you can start things off by summarizing them if you want, and then we can ask any questions. Sure. Uh, so I'll start with, sorry, I have to pull it up. Um, the Ensign uh, offer. Um, uh, let me find it. Bear with me here. Okay. Uh, so they, Ensign Group, um is a is a very strong buyer uh probably the uh the strongest of of these three um slid has worked with them a number of times um uh, i have actually never personally worked with them but uh the the other brokers at at slid who have said they're uh they're great to work with and have always performed um uh, based on their initial offer so uh, they met our, our counter um, and I believe all aspects. So purchase price, uh, earnest money, um, and, and timing. Uh, there was talk uh, internally, apparently, with Ensign and, and the broker at SLIB who's, uh, who brought this offer. Uh, they wanted to close as quickly as possible, uh, and we're trying to get get it to the point where they could close by year end. Um, then they talked to their local council, their Kansas council, who uh, reminded them that there is technically a 60 day change of ownership process. Um, so that's why they've bumped their closing date to February 1st. And I cannot find it in the letter of intent, but that I remember reading that, um, which is a very, very quick timeline, uh, but they, they have the ability to do that. Um, so that would be, in my opinion, the the strongest of the three offers. Uh, the next offer would be um, GT Healthcare. Uh, first off, do you have any questions on, on Ensign's offer? Um, on Ensign, do they have any uh, stipulations on the uh, Harwai Trust? I noticed that Ensign, on the Ensign does not, no. Um, they did not address it. Um, and yeah, the, and as far as I know, it has not even been brought up with them. So this is $1.6 million just for Atchison Senior Village uh, without the Harwai Trust. Okay, thank you. Uh, Nick, this yes. is uh, Commissioner Rivas. Uh, could you give us a little background on each company as we go through them? So, like, how many homes they operate, uh, what their presence in Kansas, Missouri, this region is, things like that. Sure, sure. So, Ensign is a uh, publicly traded company. Um, I believe they're based in California. Yes, yep. uh, they're in, in San Juan Capistrano. Uh, very large group. They have a, a decent presence in Kansas, and I don't know how many they have. Uh, I know in the last couple of years, they've acquired uh, a couple homes in, in the eastern half of the state, uh, one in Ottawa, I believe. Um, but uh, just a, a really, really strong group. Um, very uh, good reputation in the industry. Um, and well capitalized. Um, uh, they're one of the larger uh, skilled nursing owners in the country. 
um, and, and again, have a have a great uh, reputation both from uh, an, a regulatory standpoint and uh, operationally. Um, any other questions on the Ensign offer or Ensign specifically? So I have a question. You um, notated that they're a strong buyer um, and they always perform. Is that from a financial outlook as far as, because um, you're just the broker of the real estate transaction, but do you follow these clients along with success rating after you close them or how does that work? Like, I just want to understand why your recommendation is this is a strong buyer, whether it's their financial, um, overall financial, you know, outlook or, or, or what that. Yeah, uh, good question. I, I think when I, when I say that, I, what I mean is they have uh, the ability to get this transaction closed in a timely manner. They they have the money to do it. They would Ensign would pay cash for for Atchison Senior Village, um, okay. so there's no no issue with financing. Uh, so <clears throat> when I say that, I mean they for our transaction uh, process. Um, they're they're strong in that capacity, uh, and then just reputation in the market. You know, post closing, I think uh, they have a. I know they have a very strong reputation from an operational standpoint. The way they treat uh, staff and and, uh, and residents. Okay. Uh, and and that, from what I understand, have they they make it a point to have a uh, strong relationship with uh, hospitals, local hospitals, and um, uh, other referral sources as well, so they they would uh, they would work in tandem with Amberwell. Okay, thank you. So the other um, written offer we got after the the, the counters was from uh, GT Healthcare. Uh, GT is it's really a, it's a entity that was formed um, recently. It's uh, uh, a gentleman named um, uh, Yoni Grunbaum, that's the G, and Nathan Tritel, which is the T. Um, they are, uh, uh, well, Nathan is based in New York and Yoni is based in Miami. Um, they uh, are both, both have ties to Recover Care. Um, Yoni used to work for Recover Care, he doesn't uh, any longer. Nathan is uh, the main financial backer for Recover Care, but it's it's important to note that this offer has nothing to do with Recover Care. I just bring them up because they do have a uh, a lot of experience in in Kansas uh, and know the market well. Um, so this is a an entity created outside of Recover Care with individuals from the company. Um, they would be using. Uh, a new healthcare who I, I know you all have experience with as the operator. Um, uh, I, I believe it's just a, a, a standard third party operator. Uh, I don't think it's like a, a joint venture structure where uh, a new would have uh, money invested in the deal. Um, they, uh, their, their offer was a little different. Uh, it's technically $1.6 million, but the purchase price was, uh, it's spelled out as 1.5 million at cash at closing with an additional $100,000 contingent and paid out when the Harwai Trust is transferred to uh, the new operators non-for-profit. So it adds a little complexity uh, to the offer, especially when comparing it to uh, Ensign's offer. Um, but, uh, still a strong, strong offer in my opinion. I just don't know enough about the trust to know if that's even feasible for them to, to have access to it and, and what the likelihood of, uh, that the county receiving that hundred thousand dollars is, so uh, aside from, oh, go ahead. If the trust is not on the table, their offer is 1.5. Correct. Okay. Yeah, the county really has no 
no um, influence. Well, my, we may have some influence, but we have nothing to do with how that uh, board would uh, transfer or who they would be willing to. Uh, that's kind of in the courts. So um, that's kind of a no non-issue. Yeah, and, and I presented it to them that way. Um, I don't know if I knew, um, you know, just with their knowledge of the, the facility and, and the Harway Trust threw that in there, asked them to throw that in there. Um, in my opinion, it just complicates their offer that much and, you know, puts it in, uh, in a second position compared to Ensign. Uh, aside from pricing and, and the trust, um, you know, they're, they proposed $60,000 earnest money as well, which I think was in their initial uh, letter of intent, uh, fairly quick timeline, um, a, a good offer when, when all, all things said, uh, just, you know, that the Harway Trust piece kind of just adds a, a little complexity, but uh, still not a bad offer. And this is uh, a solid group. Um, I've done a lot of work with uh, these three individuals on various transactions. Uh, some, the three combined, um, uh, and others uh, you know, with Recover Care or a new separately. So uh, all, all good people, knowledgeable in the industry. Um, you know, if the Ensign offer wasn't there, I would I would highly recommend uh, this group as well. Hey, Nick, um, I yes. know um, Commissioner Quinn had talked about, you know, why you would choose, you know, a rank Ensign as number one, but kind of to piggyback off of what she had said, <clears throat> um, you'd, you'd mentioned that this GT Healthcare was formed recently, and you just had said that you've had kind of a working relationship with with each individual party and and maybe some together um, but do you what is the track record of this whole gt healthcare combined like do, is there any proven things that that they've done um i guess that would set them above in sign sure uh good question so um GT, the, just the name GT was newly formed. Um, that group of three individuals uh, uh, have, has worked together mainly in, in Iowa. I sold them uh, a nursing home in Anita, Iowa um, late last year and an assisted living in Lenox, Iowa earlier this year. Uh, and that was uh, essentially GT Healthcare it was all the individuals in GT Healthcare before they formally, you know, created that, that entity. Okay. Uh, and those were successful transactions. Uh, they, uh, you know, they did exactly what they said they were going to do as far as price. There was no retrade on price. There was no uh, extensions unnecessary. I don't think any, any extensions at all. Um, okay. But uh um, they're, they're a good buyer. There's no, no question about it. Um, you know, I, I, and, and I think honestly, if push came to shove and you, you liked this group, uh, they would probably step up to 1.6 million without the Harway trust. Okay. Thank you. Any other, uh, questions on this offer or this group? So you had mentioned where the owners um, that formed it were one resided in New York and Miami. When I was looking them up online, I was just finding Hong Kong. Is that the same company? Uh, GT Healthcare. You, like the only one when I searched for um, for the gentleman Yanni that sent it was coming mm -hmm. up as Hong Kong. So I just wanted to make sure that I was researching uh, the correct companies when I was looking, looking into these. Yeah, that's news to me. Um, okay. I, I don't know of any ties to Hong Kong. Um, cause uh, you know, again, the, the, the main money source is Nathan Tritel. He may have, I know he has ties to Israel, but he's definitely based in, in New York. Okay. Thank you. You also mentioned, 
uh, a nonprofit. So do they have a nonprofit that's off to the side, but this wouldn't be ran as a nonprofit nursing home, correct? Correct. And, and that was new. Um, I, you know, that, that was never mentioned to me previously, but I believe uh, Mark Hastings with the new uh, recently formed a nonprofit. And I don't know the circumstances surrounding that, if it was uh, for a different transaction or potentially for this one. So, um, it, it, you know, I think he knows enough to know that the Harwai Trust would have to be, have to go to a nonprofit. Um, so maybe that's why he, he created it, but I don't know enough about that, that particular entity. Okay. Thank you. Can we take a two minute break before we do Amber Wells and go through that one? Sure. Are you okay with that? Okay, sorry. Preventing my cough by drinking so much water. That's <laughs> I did too, Carmel. I don't drink coffee very often. I just feel like I was like, well, this can be my one. Now we're going to review some of the policies and what this is going to go through now. Sorry, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, Nick, if you ready for Amber Wells. Sure, sure. So um, obviously you all know Amber Well a lot better than I do. So um, I, won't, I won't speak to their background. Um, I, I can say that my experience with uh, with Jeff Perry has been good. Uh, he's a seems like a very you know respectable individual, and and was uh, um, you know it, it was a pleasure you know working with him through this process so far. Uh, their <clears throat> initial offer is what we can discuss um, mainly because they they weren't able to uh, uh, willing to to increase their their price or improve their terms. Um, so they um, came in at a million dollars uh, with uh, essentially 100% seller financing. So um, five years of, of $200,000 a year um, in payments. Um, and then um, they also had a, a uh, post-closing operations um, um, where they will make capital improvements to the acquired assets of uh, $250,000. Um, other than that, uh, you know, pretty standard terms. Uh, but when we countered them, uh, Mr. Perry did send an email saying, essentially, they're, they're not in a position to uh, increase their purchase price. So I, I know there's more to this than, than just price and, and terms, but, uh, um, you know, as an outsider looking in, um, I would, you know, say they're probably in a, a third position, but um, that's not my decision to make. So, 
Okay, so just so I'm reading it right, they're just guaranteeing to us that after the closing of the facility for the $1 million offer, they are guaranteeing that they are going to put 250000 into the facility for upgrades. Yeah, it's number five. Do you have no, the yeah, I, Yep, I'm, I'm okay. reading it. I just wanted to make sure that that was just part of the, okay. That Correct. I understood yes. correctly. Mm -hmm. so it doesn't... And it's interesting. I mean, I've never seen that necessarily in a letter of intent. Um, it doesn't mean that Ensign or GT wouldn't be doing the same. It's just not typically spelled out in a letter of intent. Have Is it typical to ask for 100% uh, seller financing? Uh, no, not at all. Um, in, in today's market, uh, we are seeing more requests for seller financing, but generally it's somewhere in the 10 to maybe 20% range of the purchase price. Um, you know, most sellers and any lender are going to want the buyer to have some skin in the game. Um, and maybe that's why they spelled out the, uh, the piece about, you know, the 250,000 in improvements. And again, they also requested the Harway Trust. Correct. Which we can't guarantee. Right. Right. I was trying to look through what their uh, tentative closing date was. Um, Because Ensign wanted to close year end. GT. Yeah, and, and just so you know, Ensign will not be able to close year end. Um, I mean, it would, it would be February 1st at the earliest, um, GT, I'd have to back into their closing date, but I, they can typically move pretty quickly. Uh, if we went back to them and said, you need to close by February 1st, they would, they would be able to do that most likely. Um, and they have the ability to pay cash as well. Um, and then, uh, the Amberwell offer, uh, I'd also have to kind of back into closing, but um, yeah, I, I would say a, a realistic closing date at this point would be, you know, March 1st. If you can get one of these groups to close February 1st, that's that's moving pretty quickly. Uh, Nick, this is Commissioner Rebus. You've talked a lot about the financial side. Um, so I'd like to know a little bit more about um, the quality of their care and kind of their operating um, mission and, and how they how they uh, get performance out of the nursing homes. I mean, how do they how do they get the how do they make it work without uh, negatively affecting our staff or patients? So where can we where can we get a little more information about uh, at least the top two, I guess, we could, we could call it. We know Amber well. Yeah, so I think, um, you know, one thing that may help you all is uh, uh, some some references, uh, maybe from somebody who's sold to them, um, which I can, I'd be happy to try to, to get for you. Um, you know, I don't, uh, you know, especially for a buyer that I've never represented on the, the sell, sell side, um, I, I don't know. Um, you know, too much about how they operate. Um, I will say most buyers in today's market um, are going to treat staff like gold because staffing is so difficult um, in today's market. So uh, that's a, a question that most sellers have is, you know, will the buyer retain my staff? And the answer uh, is generally yes. Um, they'll at least give them you know, some sort of probationary period, you know, 60, 90 days. Um, but most buyers don't want to go in and, and, you know, turn things on its head and, and you know, fire a bunch of staff. It's, those staff are, are valuable in today's industry. Um, 
but as far as you know <clears throat> uh, specifically how they operate um i mean you could go to some survey history on on you know some of the facilities they operate in the state um that would be an exercise that may be helpful Have any thoughts or additional questions? Um, we're not meeting next week, so. So the plan is to kind of figure it out. Today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Eric, did you have any thoughts or questions that you needed to? No. Mark, did you have have any um thing? I mean. Um. Well, so I guess just being from the finance side and how the day-to-day -day business side of things are, is going to transpire out, I suppose. Um, I'm worried a lot about <clears throat> this, no matter who is chosen, I, I'm worried about the transition of vendors and how to terminate contracts that we have or not even contracts but just business dealings that we have with the vendors in and out of the facility um i don't want something to get dropped of like a vital service that we have just because we are not going to have the facility anymore what if the new buyer doesn't want that service but yet a resident has been getting that service for so long. I don't know. That's probably an awful example, but um, I just don't want something to be missed of when we're switching. Like who's going to help us with vendors. I don't know who, how many vendors that we use up there. I don't know what we use on a day to day. I just know we have bills. I can go through the bills and see what vendors we use regularly, but it's a lot of work. Um, if if it's myself doing the 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 middleman from this vendor to to communicate with a new buyer and i don't know if we're going to have help with that i don't know what the payroll situation is going to look like when the cutoff is going to be um so i just have some some thoughts with that yeah and that's uh that's a good question uh and that's that's something that is dealt with during the due diligence period um <laughs> And one of the one of no matter who the buyer is, um, one of their requests and due diligence will be a list of vendors. Uh, you know, I would imagine that they'll have you know a good chunk of your vendors that they already use and already have a, a working relationship with. Uh, and then during due diligence, they will um, have to notify you of any vendors that they will not be continuing with. Um, and as you, you know, as you get closer to a closing date, we would have, um, you know, weekly or, or every other week, uh, calls, transition calls. And, and that's something I do on most of my transactions. And those calls, as we get closer, generally have a lot to do with vendors and, and how we transition. Okay. I think on those calls, I, I, I know it may be not all the time that Jody and I are needed, the HR director and myself, but I think that we're going to have to be on them just in mm -hmm. case something comes up um, that deals with a personnel matter or a financial matter. In addition to the administrator, the business office manager, you know, the, the person that does the bills up there, I think all five of us are going to have to be together on that every week. Sure. Sure. No, that makes a lot of sense. And just so you know, uh, both Ensign and the individuals at GT, uh, they've done this many times um, and have it down to a science. So they they know, you know, if it was a buyer that had, hadn't acquired in, you know, 10 years, I'd be a little worried. But uh, both of those companies have done this so many times recently, too. So uh, they have it 
have it down and it will make your life a lot easier. So I'll, I'll just share where I'm at um, yeah. because I've been reading these and thinking this through and, um, and also reviewing all of the constituent feedback throughout this whole process in my head. Um, and when you look at this, you know, I've been asked, you know, will you need to sell to for profit for sales tax? And it needs to be the, you know, the local hospital where it needs to be this or that. And like at the end of the day, I just go back to my first meeting when I was learning about Senior Village and the county running it. And I was told that it just sits out here and like runs itself, right? So it doesn't have anything to do with Avalorum taxes and it just sits out here and runs itself. Well, then the more in depth you get and learning, it's sitting out here losing money, you know, since, since 2015 that it's, that's what's happening. So it's not that we're trying to sell the facility to make a buck, to, to make it, you know, to run away with the cash. It's, we have to find someone that will run this place better than we can, right? And to find someone that will value our staff and our residents and carry it on. Because, you know, for profit's great for the sales tax piece, but when you look at the maps or where they're originated from and it's possibly Hong Kong or Miami or New York, like we're actually in Kansas. So like we can ride the sales tax wave, but if times got tough, we would probably be the first one that would be closed, right? So like leaning toward your local, what you know, what you feel comfortable with. I know the money is not as much, but the seller financing piece doesn't bother me because we're really not financing anything. They're just spreading their payments out to us over here for, for five years, right? Of like, okay. And right now the county doesn't have a long-term plan for what that would be used for. And also we've al already exhausted our budget in Senior Village this year already. So we're just like digging ourselves into a hole. So it's not like we're going to sell it and walk away with this chunk of change to go do great things. So I want what's best for our county and our community and, and long-term. And I mean, I, I love weighing all of these factors. So Nick, thank you so much for giving us this information. And I'm sorry if I'm disappointing you as our finance director, Mark, because you have a job to do that's different than mine. But like, as I look at all three of these, I mean, my gut for long term success and stability, I, I, I'm feeling that Amber Wells where I'm, I'm lying after Absolutely. this conversation. And after I kind of took everything in on my own reading, having these conversations, um, because again, it's not, it's not that we're making decisions to sell a facility for a dollar, right? Like we don't, it's not a monetary reason why we need to do this. We have to find someone to, to manage the facility for long-term success and I don't know. I'm just. I think we need to map what that map out what that looks like because if if we talk about selling the the financial method that they have, like how is Atchison County going to get two hundred thousand dollars a year? Because that Harwai won't belong to us necessarily anymore. It'll it it may transition. So. Weren't they uh, just I, saying? Uh, go ahead. No, sorry. I thought they were just saying that their offer is a million, but they're going to pay it over five years. Right. Like, so they're going to write us a check. So basically giving it to us over the next five years versus writing us a check for a million in 2024. Yeah, independent of the Harwai. Independent of the Harwai. Okay. Yeah, but they, they are writing in the Harwai that they have to have the Harwai, and we can't guarantee that. Correct. And yeah. I agree with that, Eric. We need to, so, I mean, we need, maybe we just need to say that that's not like, because we don't know that. And we don't want to also accept a deal that could fall through based on that. But I, I'm just sharing my thoughts so that people can give me feedback because at the end of the day, like, this is a huge decision 
and you want to make the right one. Um, but when you're looking at within $500,000, that won't even pay for a mile of Ottawa Road. So that puts it into perspective of, of you know, it can't be about money. It has to be about what's right and a, a, a good fit. Yeah, I, I can't disagree with you more. Uh, I would rank them the way that uh, uh, was presented to us today. And part of that is we, we don't have to worry about the the financing, financing it for four or five years. Uh, we don't have to worry about the Harwai Trust. Um, they've got a good reputation. And the Amberwell offer won't even cover the deficit we're going to have this year. So the offer of one million probably won't cover the cost. So we will be selling at a loss for the first year. Nick, are you, are, are you able to talk a little bit about that post closing operations of that two hundred fifty thousand dollars? I don't have the 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 contract in front of me or the whatever. Sure, I, I can just I'll read it to you because you know I'd have to talk to Mr. Perry about you know the exact intent here, but. Uh, number five is post-closing operations. Uh, AHA will contract with AHS to operate a licensed assisted living facility after the closing of the transaction. Uh, Amberwell will make capital improvements to the acquired assets of $250,000. That's all it says. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, jumping to real quick, uh, I just want to interject. Uh, the way the the Amberwell letter of intent is written, I'm not sure uh, Atchison County could even sign this because it is uh, spelling out that the Harwai Trust is a condition of closing. Um, and and you, from what I understand, you all don't even have control of that trust. So um, I'm not sure how that that section would need to be removed. So. I have, I have another question, um, Mark, it might be you or Pat, but we've had deficits every, I mean, every year pretty much since 2015. So how has the county on the financial side of things handled that? And then also how will you handle it with this one? Because it was my understanding that you can't utilize funds from the general budget of Atchison County to to make up a deficit of Senior Village. That's correct. You can so know. if we close out 2023, a million dollars in the hole, can that, does that get written off? What no. happens? What, there, what happens? You will have to find, the commission will have to find other non-budgeted funds and use it to satisfy the debt. Okay, so then that, that puts another perspective in my brain of, Kind of leaning toward Eric then because it I don't understand what was done every year before that. So so uh, just to kind of give you a look, sorry, Eric, go ahead. Well, I was going to say for him, since I've been commissioner, the, the longest of this three that's here, and I see uh, Mr. Pohl is in the audience too. He will probably remember this also, um, that there was uh, basically savings. They had built up savings over the years. And those savings have been dwindling, dwindling, dwindling. So it's it hasn't came out yet of ad valorem taxes. But at some point, you know, when the, the savings account is dry, where else are you going to dip from? And so that's a big concern of mine this year. The the savings are in essence gone, the 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 cash buildup that they had had for years. And now it's gonna it's coming down to the nut, nuts and bolts that we're out of money. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, and, and uh, Mark, did I didn't want to butt in on your That's comment. okay. So I was just going to say that how to answer Commissioner Quinn's thought is, so like if in 2020 they ended with $10,000 negative, it would just kind of roll over and start 21's year in negative, and then the year would just go on, you would get cash, you'd spend cash, you'd get cash, you know, and so forth. And then it just was rolling. So at the end of 21, if it was negative, it would start 22 negative and hopes of making a profit. Um, but in the trends that I've shown you the past year or so, it, it just hasn't. It hasn't come back. So with the last email that you gave us a prediction on, the prediction yeah. was a million dollars basically in the hole. 
for 2023, correct? Well, that was the amount of budget that we would need to increase to to even allow Senior Village to spend money. That did not take into account any revenue that Senior Village may acquire by the end of the year. So that was just banking on no revenue coming in at all. That was just what it would take for Senior Village to keep afloat through the end of the year on expenditures. So what's the average revenue in a month? I mean, so there's going to be revenue. I mean, we're getting paid. Um, 300000 maybe. Right. So I guess this is good for me to understand because, like, the Amber Wells, where I feel like our when we started talking about Senior Village and finding a long-term plan, like that fits that, but I feel like we're being forced in a corner based on the finances of it and making the financial decision what's right for the whole county because we cannot absorb a deficit like that, period. No. Like it's 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 not okay. Um, and it's frustrating. And it's frustrating that it's gotten to this point. Um, but I mean, we went through this budget season and saw how hard. And, and how limited our resources is for the needs that we have. And so, I mean, if we're in a in a corner like that, then I mean, I, I align with Eric based on financial ability, but what the reasons of why we were selling Senior Village so uh, then align. Would it help you if we are, I don't, I don't, know 100% about this kind of stuff. So forgive me for even asking, but is it something that we can visit with each party that you want to, to say what your vision is? I feel like that's not out of line to ask what their vision is for the place. Yeah, I know. And I've been thinking through that because we've had conversations of, well, what if this person, like, what if this company turns it into a a rehab or what if this company shuts it down or what if this, you know, and all of those things, we can't worry about that. We have to worry about the decision at hand and making sure that we make it the right decision based on the information we have. And so that's the thing for me of if we were, if we were flourishing in 2023 and like feeling good and we're just looking for a long-term success for it, um, it's a no brainer for me on the Amberwell piece, but knowing we could be in it for a negative of a million i can't sit up here and make that decision not to go with the 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 ensign group mark on the million put it put you on the spot a little bit if you actually do the kind of cash flow look at the whole situation the the year is it more likely to be like three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand? because you only took into account expenses yeah, so that's only taken into account the expenses of that million. I suspect that, I mean, we still have November, most of November um, that hasn't been actually hit on the books yet. And then you have all of December for revenue that's going to come in. And I know that there's about 40 something thousand in Harwai that's going to get deposited. Um, so I think there's probably 500,000 in revenue that's still going to come in. Okay. So but they are. Probably yeah, sorry, five hundred thousand in the hole. Yeah, right. Okay. And at one point, we were over six hundred thousand in the hole with collections. What have we determined can be collected is be and is being collected? Um, because I thought anything over ninety days, it was basically a write off, right? Yeah, Do you Lindsay, know I don't that? know what the business office manager has done yeah. with. Um, so lots of like the stuff that's older is based, you know, like the have has came from the fact that whoever in the past few years, when they've accepted someone who's been Medicaid pending has just not followed through. So we have, I know off the top of my head, we have one person in there who since, at least I've been there. We only have two people that are pending and we had eight people that were Medicaid pending. And like one of those persons is, you know, like they're looking, you know, today we just discussed them because their bill was at like $50,000 that is back owed. And it's because there was like no follow through on whoever was doing that applicant or Medicaid, you know, making sure the family 
got the supporting documents, submitted it, you know, if they got denied, sending in the information that they were requesting to kind of like determine whether they were or were not eligible. So there was zero follow through on that. So we've taken it from eight to down to two people. And so some of that, like the lady that has $50,000 that's Medicaid pending, it's because it was like over a year ago that, you know, like for a year she was denied or still pending and wasn't ever approved for them to back pay. Um, so we would have to just get with PHT, like the billing company and determine, you know, what they feel like could still be collectible and what would need to be like written off. And then I would, would have to bring that to you guys to determine. Have we done, like we, we're not doing that since it's the last time we, with the. Uh... Sam is doing a monthly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A monthly meeting at the end of the month with PHT on the phone. Okay. Yep. Uh, Nick, I have a question about Ensign. Did the folks um, visit our facility? So their uh, their local uh, site operational staff knows the the facility well. Apparently, that's what I'm told. Um, they and I'll try to get you a, a list of their facilities. Um, but from what I understand, they have have some in the area, and their their local staff knows. There's five in, in the closest one is like two five in Kansas. What do you think? Uh, there's seven on their current map oh, seven, in Kansas. Okay. They own one in Topeka, one in they own River Bend. River Bend. I think there's two, like four, six, seven. Yeah. So, Kansas City, Kansas. Like Kansas further down. There's the two in KCK, the Providence Place, okay, five out, River Bend. Five. Yeah. Okay. And then Overland Park, Leewood, and the Health Olaka, Resort in Topeka. And Ottawa and Topeka. So um so I guess Nick, what's your I mean, I guess when we talked about how this process would go, I thought that it may be a little more intimate of knowing like who you're choosing, you know, kind of and why and being certain, you know, all the things, but um, is it just, we're going to choose and then move forward or will they ever come meet us in person or see the facility? It just. Oh, sure. Yeah. So uh, we can tailor it to your needs. If, if you all want them to be on a, on a zoom or meet you in person, they'll be willing to do that. Um, at some point, yes, they would, they would be on site. Um, you know, typically these sales are, are very confidential. Um, I know that's not necessarily the case here, but we, we generally try to keep keep them off site as much as possible until closing. Um, but uh, no, they would they would be do a site visit. They could meet with you, Zoom, whatever you prefer. Okay, Eric, what do you need? Um, is there anything you need to know before making your decision? Um, I I could make it today, but if we if you all wanted to meet with them, I think a face to face is always best. I think that's okay too. So um, I think I have enough information that I could make a, a decision today. Okay. Uh, does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Alan. Um, I could make a decision today, but I think I'm I'm with you as far as I would like to have. I like to talk to the companies, you know, the representatives. Face know, to face? Uh, face to face or Zoom. I mean, yeah. Okay. I'm fine with Zoom. Okay. You're, you're talking um, about doing that before making a decision? Is that? That or if this could be, um, if we pick someone who's first step and we basically go through a process with them, we would, you know, possibly decide that it won't work and go to number two. I mean, that's another approach. Is that possible, Nick? Uh, it is. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, if, if you choose one, um, you know, they don't have to know that they're the, the chosen party. So, uh, you know, if, let, let's just use Ensign as the example. Um, 
if, if you all agree that they're the front runner, uh, we could schedule a, a Zoom or in-person meeting. Um, and just the, all they have to know is that's part of the process. They don't have to know they're the, the front runner. Um, and then how does that work with the collection? So uh, hypothetically, if we had $300,000 worth of collectible um, debt, Are you referring to uh, like accounts receivable? Yes. That would be yours. Everything pre-closing. So through is the yours. closing, we will still absorb all of that on our own, and then they'll get a clean slate, basically starting. Yeah, with. even even post-closing, any any aged receivables yeah. from your time of operations are yours. Okay. Okay. Um, so that probably gives me what I need. Like I just need an update um on our end of where we're at um financially i mean we signed today 236,000 under in cash uh but just to know where we're at overall financially um in the red what's collectible um because again we can't put a burden on taxpayers we need to uh so if the burden is in the red, I mean, I I would go with Ensign. Um, if it's if it's in the green and we're feeling confident, um, I would I would go with you know with with the comfort, <laughs> the comfort of moving forward. But I, so if you guys can kind of get that to us, I mean, I I don't know. I I can make a decision today. Um, can you? I mean. Where do you want to see those numbers? What are you, you're okay. Okay. All right. Um, where are you at? Um, in some, I'm saying that you didn't sign uh, because of the situation, but I prefer Amber Will. Um, that would start with inside and, and do a little more process for them, a little deeper dive and um, see if that's the right fit. Okay. Inside. Yes. Okay, hey, I'm good with um Ensign based on learning more about the uh financial state of the building. So uh Nick, can you move forward with that and uh get something set up for us? The next time we'll be together is oh December 5th. So December 12th. I want to do that. Did you want to make them? Right? Yeah, I can. I can zoom on the fifth. Or, or, you guys will be fifth. Mm -hmm. I fifth. But I mean, will a, I mean, if we're giving you the go ahead to go with Ensign, and it would probably be nice to set it up for the twelfth. That way, we could take our time and maybe even go up to the facility. Kind of have yeah, a. That's fine. Because I'll, I'll, sure? I'll be a KC and I can just go zoom, zoom and. Okay. Yeah, I can. I can do that. All right, the 5th. This is more important. December 5th. Okay. So there won't be a signed letter of intent, correct? You want to you want to meet with them first no, before si signing? No, you do. I mean, I would be. I think we're okay to sign a letter. If you sign soon, then we, the process can start. Um, the only problem then is... <laughs> I don't think you'll meet with them and, and dislike them to the point where you want to go a different direction, but then you, we'd have to, if that is the case, we'd have to uh, figure out how to break up with them. I mean, you're not going to, you're not going to know. <laughs> well, I mean, from a legal point of view, if you sign the letter of intent, you are bound. Yeah, you're to some degree. It's, it's non-binding. It's just, uh, it'll be exclusive where you can't, um, you can't work with another buyer until that LOI is terminated. That's, that's yeah, that's we're good. Fine. So you're good signing? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because that, that'll that get the process started. And, and I think you're really going to like their folks. And um, that way they can still stick to the February 1st timeline. If it gets pushed out to December 12th, I would say that's probably in question somewhat. Agreed. Yeah, December fifth should be fine. Do you have? Uh, I can print it. The letter. I, I, you got it. I, I just started to print it. Okay, perfect. 
<laughs> okay, anything else for, for me? Yeah, I'm on remote. This is Commissioner Knoll. So do I need to have that signed uh, relatively soon within today or? It only has one place for one signature. Okay. I'll yeah, I think for, for letter of intent purposes, and you, you all know more than I do, just, I, I, you know, I think, I think one person signing should be fine. Okay. Uh, I wasn't in, aware of how that yeah. looked, so. So, so the, uh, just so you know, the next step, other than uh, meeting with them, um, is the, is drafting the, uh, excuse me, drafting the, the purchase agreement. Generally, we, we like the buyer to do that, uh, the first draft, just so they're, they're spending money on the transaction right out of the gate. Um, they, if it's Ensign, um, they will want to probably start, they have an in, in-house counsel, so they'd probably start that right away, uh, unless we tell them we want to hold off until after, after we meet. Are you printing the other one, Pat? This isn't the right one. Oops. I'm sorry, I do. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Okay, so I look for a motion to allow the chair to sign um, the letter of intent for Atchison Senior Village with the Ensign Group in the amount of $1,600,000. Do I have a motion to approve? So move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. All right. Thank you, Nick. Oh, you're welcome. So you. uh, will Pat be sending me that signed copy? We'll, we'll get it scanned. Yeah. And Either the, yeah. Pat or the clerk's office. Do you, do you want the original? Uh, I don't need the original, just to scan and, and digital versions. Fine. And then uh, I will let Ensign know that uh, uh, you'd like to meet with them. You'd, either via zoom or in person on december 5th is that correct yes yes okay okay and are you just going to leave that up to them or do you have a preference mm -hmm. between zoom and in person my preference would be in person okay um and then let me give you we'll give you a time so it's not in limbo okay so okay 11:40 would be the next available time because i figure it's going to be more than 10 minutes right how many to work you just... 11:40. Okay. What, I mean, I'll be a case. Do you want to do new? Would you rather do new? Do you want to do new? Whatever fits. I'm good. I'm good. Noon, so you yeah, let's do noon. It'd be easier than like, to remember. I, I need to <laughs> wait anyway. Let's... Okay, so we'll do noon, Nick, on December 5th, please. Okay, and where would they be meeting you? At the Atchison County Court. Uh, we could go up there. We're here. Probably here. 
you're going to be via Zoom, so definitely here. So the county courthouse. Okay. And I am, uh, I'm already traveling that day, so I will not be <laughs> available. But I don't think you'll need me. And if, if you want a representative of, from SLIB, um, my colleague Ryan Saul, who, who brought that offer, uh, could be available. Okay. Thanks for your patience as we talk through this. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm glad uh, a decision's been made, at least for now. And uh, if there's anything else I can help with, please let me know. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Okay. Have anything for us, Lindsay? Nope. So you need an updated aging report? Yes, please. Thank you. Do you just want me to send that or That's bring fine. it on? With it? Yeah, you could just email it to us. Will you include me on that too, Lindsay, please? Oh, yes. Uh, I have a little background in this. I think we made a very wise decision. Back in my terms as commissioner, I could see it was getting more distressed on the county because there's a lot of things that wasn't figured into that uh, payroll and IT and other various things. But I think you made the right decision, but now let's put that money to where it's the best use. That's probably more key than selling the right sector. Okay, thank you. I agree. No, I appreciate your input. I just pray there's money to put towards something because that's the that's the hard part. So um but thank you. It, it's not an easy decision at all. No, it isn't. <laughs> um, all right. So unfinished business. Um, I know Walnut Township um, had asked to join. So um, yeah. I, um, we had a meeting last night. Um, yep. So I'll have you, Gary. So Gary's the trustee of Walnut Township. Um, yeah. Thank you, Lindsay. Uh, we had a regular meeting last night, and we had it down at uh, next to Poor Richards. I had because we got evicted from the par the firehouse. Uh, and I went ahead and scheduled one uh, down here at the between the donut shop and yeah. Poor Richards. I don't really remember what the name of yeah, it. Is. Thing, yeah. yeah. But anyway, we. I published it in a newspaper and I also texted both members. Uh, I sent them the copy of the publication that I put in the paper. So they were notified, but neither one of them showed up. So we weren't able to conduct any business, but uh, we had kind of a public forum and just discussed issues with the public of their concerns and stuff. And uh, that's why a lot of them are here today because uh, without uh, a, a quorum we can't conduct any business and uh, we're set to lose probably in the neighborhood of $75,000 of our budget if we don't <clears throat> spend it. We've got probably 140 some thousand in there that's yet to be spent. I think we can only roll over a certain amount but I can't get any cooperation out of either two as far as getting a truck running to haul rock or a greater operator, uh, it's just been a stalemate. And uh, we come here today, their consensus is that we need some sort of approval from the commissioners to go ahead and start hauling rock without their approval. Because we are in a situation where it's, I would say it's considered an emergency. There's roads since it rained are almost impassable. And we haven't had any maintenance on our roads since May or June. And they finally agreed to hire uh, John Wilburn to run the grader. And I suggested, well, who are we going to get to run the rock truck? Well, John can run it. Well, John only worked a day and a half in one month. And he can only help us on weekends and the quarries aren't open on weekends. So it's like, that's un not practical. And my cousin, Bobby Service, I was talking to him and he had a few days of slack time. So 
and he's he's run equipment all of his life. He's he's in business for himself, earth moving. And uh, he agreed. He ran it one day, and then John ran it that Sunday, and then Bobby come back Monday, and he was on the Sheridan Road, and Dwayne come up there and shut him off, told him to park the grader that he wasn't qualified to run it. And it's like, well, uh, he's been doing it all of his life. I'd say he's more qualified than about anybody we could hire. But there's there's a breakdown with the commission, our commissioners, uh, an impasse. We just can't get nothing. And then these, I was hoping at least one would show up last night, but there wasn't, there was two gone. So we conducted no business. And people behind me are, are very, very, to put it lightly, upset. And they see that we could possibly lose this funding because our next meeting is a month away and that puts it up into the holidays and we can't spend that kind of money that fast. And the situation we're in, we need to hire probably some rock hauled by an outside trucking firm or something to get even get caught up because all we got is that one small truck. And I've mentioned that to them on at least two or three meetings and they just brush me off like it's not a problem but it is a problem because we're running out of time and the roads are in in uh, some of them or i would give them an f some of them uh we haven't even got over them grading them one pass since since may or june i got about half of them and then you know every time i try to find somebody to do something I'm met with resistance and I don't understand why, because that's the mission of our, our board is to maintain the township roads and uh, everything is defiant. Uh, but they came here to voice their opinion. That was a consensus of the meeting last night to try to get some sort of uh, relief from this situation or like that, we could lose a tremendous amount of money and we, we desperately need the rock and the maintenance done to the roads before the end of the year. Not the end of the year, it's also when the weather's going to hit. We could get snowed in two weeks and be done, right. you know. Yeah, uh, I kept telling them that time is essence, but it I don't understand why they won't allow, I, I'm only one vote, so I can't, you know, that's why the people are here and they're, they're going to, they want to express their opinions of what's going on and the performance of the members. And uh, uh, so I guess I can turn it over to them if they want to, want to talk. And all boiled down to, they didn't want Gary to get it. They wanted Vincent Kane to get it because he was a yes puppet for Greg. Greg would be running the township with nothing, no way to hold him accountable. That's what it's all about. You may mention that the two of us writing checks a couple days after the meeting. That's an open meeting violation. They want to have a meeting tonight where they was evicted. That's an open meeting violation. And they just keep pushing, 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 pushing. So, Pat, you're going to have to get involved. I've heard you say several times that you don't like the county to get involved with townships. But in this case, somebody is going to have to get involved. It, it isn't uh, that I don't want to be involved with it. It's, I don't know that the Board of County Commissioners has any authority over the township. Uh, I know at that last meeting, there was some discussion by uh, by Dwayne that he wasn't available yesterday. And there was some talk about having the meeting tonight, but then the meeting deteriorated and this meeting. Nothing was ever voted on, Pat. To exactly. Do. So it, as far as I was exactly concerned, right. it was not approved. So it, that's it why was... that's why I went ahead and scheduled it at the regular date. And I think we need to stay with that because it's not fair to the public. There is I am and, and our board members are servants to the public and they should make all attempts to be there. No uh, argument with any of that at all. You know, and unless it's an emergency or they're sick or something. But like last night, there was no reason that, that D couldn't have showed up. I don't know what her excuse was. We could have conducted a meeting 
And they knew about it. And I texted them. Yeah. I texted yeah. both of them a copy mm -hmm. of the insert that I put in the newspaper. I advertised it in the newspaper, came out last Friday or Saturday. And I actually texted them a picture of that. So they were both informed. They cannot say they were not informed. Mm -hmm. And then we posted it on our website. And then it was published in the paper also. So I think I fulfilled my obligations as far as getting the word out there. And uh, no, nobody said you didn't. Mm -hmm. All I said is I know there was some discussion. Yeah, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you, but I just want to make sure that you knew that I went through the process that I thought I needed to go through. Yeah, I saw the publication that okay. was in the paper. Okay. Um, I, I don't know whether there is intention of either or both of them showing up today at a meeting because it was discussed. I agree with you. There was, I, I didn't hear a vote on there it. Was, I, yeah. um, I didn't, there was some ambiguity even about where the place was going to be. Well, yes. I, I think you're, there are a whole bunch of suggestions that I've made um, concern, and some of those were addressed at your last meeting, but you yes. need to have a meeting that's going to take a couple of hours. You have a lot of things that need to get decided. Exactly. And, you know, we got to about the one hour point and one of the members got up and said, well, I'm done and left. And, yeah. and, and then the other left as well and then remembered oh we have uh, I have conflict next month and yeah so there was a little discussion about it um the board of county commissioners doesn't have authority to they can't give what they don't have they don't have authority to order to allow you to, to spend money that's done by your it, does it fall under any kind of an emergency declaration that there was some regulations in that rule book that under emergency situations, the county could provide services like hall rock and then get reimbursed for the hall under that. But I don't know the. I've got to tell you, I've, I've read those statutes. It's been a while since I've read them particularly. Yeah. And I, I take took that to kind of be a situation where you had like a, a road get washed out and you needed to get uh yeah need, needed yeah. to get back to a specific place not not just a general malaise of the yeah it's it's a general problem throughout the township now since it rained there's a lot of roads that or i would give them an f you know, there if, if, of two, six, if, six road, if it rains, continues to rain and stuff, we're going to be in, in a miserable shape come mm -hmm. winter time or springtime because of the lack of maintenance. School bus but we have, yeah, the school bus routes and stuff are going to be questionable. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's because we have the money available, it's just we're running out of time and the other two will not cooperate and get anything moving. Yeah, I don't think you're going to lose the money. I think you're going to lose the budget authority, but you can do a budget amendment and you will be able to. It's not like the money disappears at the end of the year if it hasn't been spent. I thought we could roll over 25%. Well, you can in, roll some into a general capital and you can roll some into your budget, but you can roll some into just your general budget authority. Uh, but you, you decided that when you did your budget here a couple months yeah, ago. Yeah, I wasn't involved in I that. I understand so, you weren't, but so the, that not, could be amended. Okay. That could be amended to take care of all of it. Uh, but it doesn't address the problem we face. It does not right address. Now. That's a more sig significant problem. Yes. And that's why we're here today to try to find some kind of a resolution. We talk about uh, you know, hiring somebody. If we don't have the approval of the whole board to hire somebody to do the work. If he goes on to hire somebody, do they still get paid? Yeah. I mean, they cannot stop him from paying them, right? The majority of the board would would have to approve would have to approve any expenditures. And you know, if there's something that could be done, yeah, a lawsuit could be filed to compel the board to to uh, to meet. But if the township's going to file that, that requires two members of the board to. Uh, to, to be the petitioners, and right. we don't have that. So if he's so, going to hire somebody, the two on the board can say, no, we're not paying them, and they don't get paid. Is that what you're saying? 
I, I suppose that would be a possibility. So, but it's really, I don't have any authority. I don't have any power any more than the board of well, commissioners here right. to say, to, well, yeah, I, I get that. They'd have some political, you know, they'd have to answer to you politically, to the people politically as to why they did that. Well, the people already made a decision did. last night what they want. And they want, they want action. And we can't wait another month of inaction because we're going to be in the winter season and uh, we're going to be in serious problems coming this winter. We're already at the verge since we got this rainy spell. And I, I've known that and I've been encouraging them to do something for well, ever since I got on there. And I just keep getting brushed aside and it's like, well, we'll talk about it at the next meeting. And, and it's it's a consensus that they don't want to cooperate and get anything done because uh, it's meeting after meeting after meeting. It's a non-performance issue. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Is there any remedy to that? None that I can see for the, the not, not for, none point. that the county could impose. Um, we individuals could do a recall I think there's a petition process for that, and the process that was claimed to have been started was not the process. I mean, there there is a process set out in statute that involves getting uh, the county attorney to approve a uh, um, a petition to be signed, and mm -hmm. there are requirements for the people carrying the petition. It isn't just show up when here's right. eighty signatures on right. a blank sheet of paper. Well, what about yeah. people that are appointed? Is that any different? Because I was appointed and so was Dwayne. He was appointed. No. So it'd no, still no, be no. a recall. Yes. You're even though you're, you're not elected. You're the office holders, right? Okay. And you can't recall a majority, can you? I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a rule about that. I don't know that. Um, so perhaps go up to one. Most like, well, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't. I'm gonna plead ignorance. Yeah. I don't know. I think you can't recall a majority. Yeah, it has to be a majority member. So, I'm not lawyer, but I think yeah, that's we're right. we're in a we're in a situation that's uh, we're selected next fall, right? So yeah. you got a whole year of this. Unless we got do, a whole other year. You do a recall. It's probably gonna take I don't know what three or four months. Yeah, to get that at least done. that. That's maybe long. I don't know. See, may may not gain that much. No, right? we're not gaining anything. That's why I thought maybe under some sort of an emergency declaration or something we could possibly you know but uh pat seems that's well, not you can have a special meeting and i don't know if the other two are planning on there being a meeting today but wasn't there's there's well they don't have a place to have a meeting yeah that's what i was going to say the place where they said they're going to have it we have the fire chief here the last meeting he said no more this was temporary and no so more. Basically, so they're, they're trespassing. They're trespassing if they do show up. I would say. Okay. But it is. Uh, I've got a question. I, I had this. I'm sorry. I had a pose to me, uh, and I don't know. So I'm just passing this along. Uh, since that is a uh, paid for by tax dollars, uh, the firehouse and. Uh, this Walnut Township specifically taxes is that can they can the fire chief uh, ban ban meetings there? Well, I it's a different taxing entity, and they just happen to have the same geographic um, limits, uh, but the. The fire district has the authority to determine who is allowed to meet in their building or not use their building. Okay. That's a political per issue for for them. Um, it's probably the board for the town for the uh, fire district and not one individual person. If we're, I don't I don't want to get into splitting hairs about that because I've never I, I think I've been to one of their meetings and that was. When I, I met you, because we, they were expanding the the area of the territory, and I think that's the only time I've ever been to one of the fire district meetings, um, and that's been 12, 15 years ago. So, 
but I think the fire district has that authority to determine who can use their building. I don't understand how you say that uh, the commissioners don't have any say so in this because when I go upstairs, I'm just a, paying my bills just like anybody else. Yes, sir. I go upstairs, I write my check to the Atchison, uh, for the county, you know, the exactly. county is right. where I pay. That money is distributed by you guys. That's you know, why I understand. That's so, true. how come you have no control over our money? Well, and, and some of that goes to you say you can appoint him when he needs somebody to fill that place. How can you appoint him and not do anything about our situation now? Well, one at a time. There's a stat. There's a statute that says how a uh, vacancy in office is filled, and the statute on a vacancy in office on a township board says that it's filled by the board of county commissioners. And so that's how, because there's a statute that says you have authority to do that. There are also statutes regarding taxes that this. The Board of County Commissioners is responsible for appointing a treasurer, appointing the appraiser, all the staff that does the appraisal of land, um, it, other than farmland, uh, does the collection of those taxes, and then distributes it out. And we have, I, I don't know, I'll just say dozens of different taxing entities that the money gets paid to. That is, some of it gets paid to school boards, some of it gets paid to uh, other cities, it's paid to the eight townships, it gets paid to a couple dozen cemetery districts, it gets paid to a couple of uh, uh, the library boards, etc. And unless there is some statute that gives the Board of County Commissioners authority, the spending of that money and determining how to spend the money that goes to the other taxing entities is up to the, the board that's entrusted with running that other entity so if it goes to the city of atchison they have a uh, they have a, a commission and a city manager and they're responsible for seeing that those funds are expended and if there's a dispute about how they're spending money that's where you need to take it up and that's the same with uh, any of the other seven townships um, or with a cemetery district or a school board uh, but that's how our system is set up. It's set up a, for payment of the taxes to the county as an administrative convenience so that people don't get, you know, there, there are a dozen different entities on your tax bill and pe most people don't want to write 12 different checks and there would be duplication of, of work if each of them did their separate billings. Uh, but that's just the system we have set up. And, I, I can understand why it looks like you're paying money and you don't yeah. have any authority, but that's why. Yes, sir. What if 90% of the Walnut Township taxpayers paid your tax on the Berkus? Nobody would get anything. County, nobody. Something would get done there. There's a there's a process for people to pay their taxes under protest. I um, I don't know that disagreeing with how money is being spent is one of the reasons for the person to, to protest the taxes. Those are usually- Protest the taxes to get the county and you and the commissioners involved getting this solved. We don't have statutory uh, jurisdiction over this. Yeah. I, I, I have been to uh, the last half dozen uh, meetings of that township. I done some work on trying to give some advice and technical assistance to some people on the board that have asked for it. Um, I think maybe that's had a, a negative effect of giving people the impression that the county had some authority that we didn't have, but it seemed to me to be the best thing to do to try to get things to, to operate in the way they're supposed to operate out there. Um, if I've given the improper impression that the county has some authority that we don't have, I, I apologize for that. But uh, there is a board that has the obligation to take care of the affairs of the township. And they're not fulfilling their obligation to mm -hmm. so the point where we're in a bond now. Mm -hmm. And we're in a situation where if I have no call, no show at my job, I'm fired. Last night, they were 
informed on this meeting. I'm mm -hmm. sure one person said they couldn't make it, but it means didn't get voted on. So we stuck with the original date. Now we point we're in a bind. We need some we need stuff to start getting done before the end of the year. And you know, call no show didn't show up to the the date that it's been for however long. There's nothing we can do. Like they're not cooperating. And if they don't show up to their job, they shouldn't be. You can't show up to well, like remove them. There's a recall process. And, and as I <clears throat> I, I did not outline all of the steps because I don't have them memorized, but the I can sure we don't have time for the process. Well, we well, we got five weeks. I don't know that you have. Well, the, the, the immediate answer is to have a freaking meeting. And we you tried. can have. Right. You, you know, have Pat, I even tried to uh, establish a special meeting a month or so ago, I, I and I, they I, wouldn't I, even cooperate. They won't return my phone calls, they won't return my text. You know, maybe you don't know the whole situation. Gary went down, Leo, Keith, to try to get the equipment for the township, the equipment that the Walnut Township owns. I've heard that. And they've called the sheriff. They wouldn't right. give the keys. Wouldn't give the keys. I've heard that. So, yeah, so he had to go out of his way, go get another key just to try to get the dump truck. But the greater and everything, he got the sheriff called on. Him. And the sheriff didn't back us then either. I mean, that's the Walnut Township's yes. equipment. They're not, it's not theirs. It's not Greg Gearing's or D's. It's the township's. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's the trustees. And one of the other problems is that they, they haven't, as far as I know, discussed and determined at their meeting, where are we going to store this? And I've been told that there's a contract. There wasn't a contract that was voted on at any meeting I was at, but I'm not at all of the meetings. Well, he hadn't even seen it. I've, never, I've requested it several times and they won't even furnish it. So, yeah, But they, and, they just want the money. But they're getting paid they get, for something. Exactly. They're Gary. charging $150 a month and they're disguising it as equipment rental until this last month. Now it says lease on the check. So I don't know what. I mean, they get paid. That for was questions year. I wanted to ask at the meeting last night. And why they get paid uh, for every meeting they go to, they get mileage, they get meeting pay. We don't even have budget. Uh, we don't even have a resolution in place. Mm -hmm. I think the meeting you were at, we voted on it, but they've never followed through with even putting it in the paper that right. I know of. And then it takes 30 days after that. So far as I'm concerned, they shouldn't have been getting paid yeah. at the point we discovered we no longer had we didn't have a resolution. Payments for meetings should have stopped at that point. Because you told us it was disagree a... With, I don't disagree with what you're saying. Yes. Um, and a majority of your board needs to approve any expenditure and yes. signing of any checks. But that's yes. a kicker. It's never going to be a majority. That approval it's, should take place at a meeting. It's, it's always going to be place. two exactly. against one. It's always going to be two against one. Well, there isn't. There's checks dated three, four, five days after the meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if they have to get together to sign the checks, that constitutes a meeting. And they get paid for it. And they themselves. Yeah, they pay themselves just. The only, actually, that's the only thing they've actually done successfully is pay, pay themselves, themselves checks. <laughs> that's that's it. That's the only thing that's really done successfully. They don't even come to the meeting with the checkbook. Nope. They write and checks at the, the meetings or nothing. And they, yeah. they say, oh, we didn't bring the checkbook. <clears throat> it's not more. Than than more I've got I've got the bank records. It's all really wonky. She looked at it. She knows. She's she's an expert. She done it before. <laughs> oh, problem. We get thrown in jail for it. Yeah. Yeah. Or the sheriff getting called and going to get him thrown out for trespassing or arrested or whatever. No. And the thing is, the sheriff said that they'd help us, support us the day before, and then came out and, and tried turned to around and tried to arrest them yeah. the next day. Stopped me. So I went and talked to them beforehand. And then they turned around the next day or two after that and stopped us. But you want our tax money, but so, nobody will help us. Yeah. So yeah. it's, uh, um, but. So I have a couple questions because yeah. I've, I've been told the same, like, we can't do anything like that's the guidance I'm given. So it's frustrating because I hear you and I know, but if there's can, so the county clerk works with the townships to approve the budgets. 
Is that her only authority? She can't help with any piece of this or a recall process. And then number we two, can't help with the, the technical aspects of a recall process. So if a recall process is started, even though it takes long, once it's started, can he start doing things because it started? Like, because at the end of the day, it's like, how do the people like, who holds these people accountable, right? Because if you have two yes. people that decide the rest of the year that they're like, I'm not showing up, you guys suffer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's like We're there's got to be an accountability process. And if yes. there's not an accountability process, you should just go do you to help the people and that's, because nobody can hold you accountable either right that's like why we're that's, here today. that's the disconnect i'm getting is like and that's the discussion. who and how do we hold people accountable we had the right discussion wrong and different last night that's why we're all here pat i've got a question seek a solution pat, I just what, what does it take to call a special meeting for them does it have to can the uh one do it or does it have to be voted on or it wouldn't have to take a vote because they wouldn't be together to vote for a special meeting. I think any one of them could do it. Um, and they you have to give notice to all three of the members. Well, from what I read in there, Pat, uh, I can call a special meeting as chairman, and then them two, other two, could call a special meeting is the way I read it in the statutes. Yeah. It, uh, unless it's changed. There's confusion in the statutes because... They can't. The two of them together couldn't uh, meet. Take an act. Take action. To so that statute's not correct a, then. Without having a meeting, well, because I think the Kansas Open Meetings Act was adopted long okay. after the okay. So that things were that's but, not worded correctly then. Probably not. Um, gotcha. And we had the same the same uh, issue. Uh, counties had. We've dealt with it with a resolution so that any okay. any uh, member may re request it, but. Um, I think any of the three okay. can, can, so that's can solve one. That's misleading. Then. Yes. Okay. Have you guys tried yeah. to talk to them, like individually, at all? At the meetings, yeah. they be at the meetings. But they get irate and yeah, pick up their stuff. And confrontational like and just can't wait to leave. Or so. me was at the last meeting. Meetings adjourned. I'm out of here. And she gets up and walks off. We call the statute number up there. Okay, thank you. There's probably some other statutes in the same area related to it. Okay, it thank just stinks to feel like you don't have to some of the wrong building, and it is a curl of hair on this old ball man bit and what they've been doing. That's true. Yeah, I just like the Mendettas need to be thrown in the ditch because we don't need them, we need our roads fixed and maintained. and care less about their problems if they work for us they should uh, well none of them would last working for me one day uh, if they you know had to work in my business they, uh, they would not survive one day for I, performance i have a question so, mr henderson uh if we call a special meeting and the other two uh won't recognize it or won't answer the phone or won't text can we send the sheriff's office with a notice of that meeting to them and hand it to them just like you would a summons? I don't know. I I, I haven't I, I could look into that, but I honestly I don't know that. I know the legislature has the authority to do that. I couldn't tell you if the Board of County Commissioners does or if any other board does, but I could I could I could figure that out, but I don't know the answer off the top of my head. I, I've got a question. So they, they planned a meeting tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got an email writer that says they think they got a meeting going tonight. Yeah, I, I, that's okay. what I wanted to ask Pat uh, about that whether that's even legal because that that's outside the standard date set up for our meetings. Uh, so that would be considered a special meeting. Would be a special meeting, and they've advertised nothing, informed nobody or anything. The place was even in question. Right. Um, I was just so, I, I was just trying to facilitate, you know, and it right, be, you guys right. need to meet and and I, this would be a pat question if there's any way that if you jumped on that bandwagon and you could find almost call a special meeting with their time time, find a place and still meet tonight because that's 
that's the first thing that's got to happen is you guys are going to have to meet and maybe establish ground rules uh, just on, okay, we've got a year of, of, of trying to get service and putting up with one another. We're going to have to get some ground rules here. Or we're going to be um, extricated from this office. That so so that, do you, yeah. is there any way that he could jump well, on the state and is it too late in the day for that? It's a kind of a process to go through to call a special meeting. I think it has right. to be publicized and things, doesn't uh, it? What pass? the Open Meetings Act requires is that notice be given to anybody who has requested to have notice of your, of your meetings. Okay. Um, we have always, as a county, tried to give notice to all of the media, so the newspaper and the radio, okay. and put it on our special media, right. on our social media, and advertise it as we can so that it's not just a surprise. But those, that's kind of going above and beyond. It's not what's required right. under the Act. I think if you've got the other two members that are planning to have a meeting today, and uh, if, if you... I think it would make sense if you're able to to go and to have the meeting because that's pretty, has, pretty important. They might vote on something. Well, uh, yeah, uh, but Isn't, they haven't officially declared it a special meeting. He's, he's they have a text here that says tonight at the firehouse. Yeah. They just text him. So just go to the firehouse and always. have you got anything, Gary? Can you notice? about no. he just she just got a text no, no i haven't had any notice of anything. That a conflict them not contacting him about the meeting itself i mean he is a, a part of the board he's a chairman mm -hmm. he, he should he yes all of them i mean look, you're you're asking me questions is this being done the way that it's set up to be done no none yeah. of this is so what, but at your last freaking meeting you were supposed to and somebody couldn't be there, you should have talked about, discussed, decided when you're going to have a meeting, where you're going to have the meeting, and voted on it. Yes. That didn't happen. Yes. And that well, is, that's not the failure of anybody associated with the Board of County Commissioners. No. And I'm not saying it's no. your fault either, but this board is dysfunctional yes. and did well, not do what they were supposed to do. Yeah. And now we're trying to figure out a way to try to get some semblance of order back to it and saying well, i'm not going to attend a meeting because it wasn't called correctly and then challenging whatever they might decide at this meeting that you decide not to go to it seems like a unproductive way to handle things if you're able to attend the meeting if you're well, not I can, able I to can, attend i the can meeting, attend the meeting but are we trespassing being there that's a concern of mine because we were evicted and we were told not to come back so uh i don't think it's proper for them to have scheduled a meeting at some place we were evicted from mm -hmm. to begin with that's that's my grievance you know and i think you probably agree with me he's yeah. yeah. part okay yeah and uh, well i mean if if they show up there and the sign says you're Okay. Uh, and then you're going to have the, the whole problem all over. Well, I fear you're going or, to get into a I have to, with both sides saying the other the other party won't be. Well, uh, I don't think that we really should be moving the dates around. The dates set permanent. Every other township has them. Why this this they've moved them like three times since I've started going to the meetings, and mm -hmm. it's like it's not. It can't be an emergency every time. And if you don't have the respect to show up at a, at a date that's supposed to be part of your job, you probably shouldn't be there. I think. You shouldn't have the job. You shouldn't have the job because that was part of it, showing up at the meetings. The dates and times were already set. It's one day out of the month. I can't see why you can't plan unless you're deathly ill or have a death in the family or I some... don't know what the emergency was. I just recall him saying that he had a conflict. Well, yeah. I don't know what that conflict was or whether it was a good reason or right. He never stated, it, but it was never voted on. So, mm -hmm. so if we go to the meeting tonight, will we be arrested or anything? I didn't recall there being a generalized, you're not allowed on this 
property. Yeah, you would. So, uh, eight, eight, I don't eight. recall that being. I don't recall that being communicated to everyone that was in attendance there. I could be wrong about he that. He out clearly I, said this is the last yeah. meeting. Yeah, yeah, he well, said that during the last meeting, and but I think uh, I told him the meeting before because uh, Steve had told me before that. And he was good enough to let us have one more meeting there because we didn't have time to reschedule any place else. If you're if you're worried about being arrested or showing up, then you just need to decide how you're going to handle it. Because I can't guarantee you that you would would not be. I don't. So. Okay, so I've been to the meetings, and every time something's brought up, you know, if I have a question or something, one of the board members usually just goes off the hook. Yep. And so we never get anything accomplished because that person is either, okay, I'm done, meeting adjourned, and she's up and gone. But so how can you decide on what we're yeah. going to do? As long as there are two people there, two members of the board there, they can continue the meeting. Can you if continue? One decides, if one decides to okay. absent themselves, the other two can continue the meeting and should continue the meeting. Okay. But when it comes to a vote? Two or well. If there want, two, if there want to be opposed, what before? Well, and then it's nothing solved, nothing. right? Right. How do you get a tiebreaker? What do you do? Well, at some point, something needs to be done, or else the the citizens are going. I mean, doing what you're doing, you've <laughs> got control. I mean, it isn't very often, but you've got control over who gets elected. And we can't wait. We can't wait, wait that long. Okay. Well, yeah. There, there's the process for. Uh, for removal and for a recall. But that we can't wait that long either. I mean, I got pictures of our road. It's a mess. We have no gravel, mud, uh, it's, uh, potholes. What about the safety of the school buses and the children? Yeah, it's uh, it's a safety issue. Is the recall process something that just takes a percentage of the voters? Like, is that, or is it like a process through? I was just wondering if instead of circulating something, if the county clerk could have it in her office and the township can show up versus one person going around door to door. Please yes. sign this. Basically, you know, it's like if the people really want something, hit, uh, there, I don't know. There are limits on uh, the person, the people that carry the petition, okay. um, and I don't think that. For, I don't think the county clerk is. No, I gave would be a proper for, proper person to do that. Uh, okay. They have to, but. It does have to be filed with the county election officer, which is okay. our county clerk. It does have to be approved by the county attorney. It, but it has to be carried by someone. It can't just be in there like we're... Correct. Okay. Of course, what I mean, you. you can't okay. recall it because you don't like the person. So if you've got some right. situations like Bill referenced where you know some things have happened, you need to go to the county attorney. But here's the reasons why, whether it's you know, theft or mm -hmm. whatever it may be, you just need to be able to show a reason so okay. that's in progress right now yes. and then i think it's just a percentage of the voters from the last election so i don't know what that math is for a township but you may not need that many people on a um, what do they have like 200 yes. something yes, residents right? some registered what are there, yeah, i didn't dig into the there's, there's some good rules about all that like yes maybe it's 30 percent or some number like that i have an idea of it what do you what do you what's the public think show up tonight or 40 percent 40 percent of the votes cast try to get something accomplished or oh, that's up to you you tell me stand outside you don't have to let us in i don't think it'd be a good idea to let us in you know you already you already told them what that yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Make a vacancy that <laughs> from the position cast. So how many do we have? I mean, like forty percent of our. Oh, I don't know. I'm not up in my office. Okay, I think it's like yeah, three hundred and seven <laughs> on our. But that was just registered voters when it last. But time again, I... it it also states on that position. I'm gonna kind of go with what Pat said because I have that statute pulled up too, sir. It says for all candidates for the office of the state office are sought to be recalled. So it's, it would be the office. So you'd have to know what office you're trying to recall. 
and then you'd have to get the votes from that. And again, be like the trustee would be for me, right? Yeah. So I don't give me a minute. Or the clerk or the secretary or treasurer. treasurer. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm trying to. And they're all elected, right? Yeah. Yes. So therefore, yes, yeah, so I just have to go back to that election mm -hmm. for that position. How many votes? Wayne was appointed. I yeah, and, Wayne and I both. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry. I know it's frustrating because you want action, and if we could, but oh, well, we, like people lying. We've, we've waited I, for Bill, some time. Right here, that's a blatant line. I from yeah. one of our board members. I agree. she wasn't notified last time. She was. Yeah, you have it on the black and white. Yeah, I I text text message. I texted all of them the, the copy of the insert yeah. to the paper mm -hmm. uh, several days ahead of time. So they well, were, yeah, they were I feel feel for you too because I know how frustrating it is. Uh, I just whatever you put out be uh, very uh, specific, like on numbers or anything you put out on your side, or and be very available. And I think that that's a good way to get to the voters when you're transparent. And, you know, if, if that's what you believe, make sure that, uh, you know, it's factual, that you don't contradict yourself. And uh, that yeah. way people will see what, what you're saying. And I would give the same advice to the other ones and, and I, that you, you be transparent. That, that's, I think, the, the main thing there. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Very I keep the tone down. Productive. I have a question about the recall process. Someone stated it takes like three months. Is that just because of the timeline of the I just threw that out there. Target? It's just not fast. Or it could take three yeah. weeks. Well, part part of that is the amount of time it takes for you for someone to gather the signatures. Yeah. Signatures. Yes. So far already it's not I think it's it happens like that. Um, yeah, then there's other rules as far as I know the clerk they have election, they have to do stuff. So I don't know all the rules are you have to dig into it, but then after you the, can't do it in a few days. A few weeks. Yeah. I think that the clerk has 30 days after mm -hmm. the petitions are submitted to count them and uh, to verify them. Verify them. So, Correct. Okay. Well, I yes, guess sir. show up tonight, see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good with you guys. Good with me. Mm -hmm. you, I work for you. You know, you tell me what you want to do. What time is that tonight? Uh, like supposed to be five thirty, I think. Since you guys can appoint him and tell him to fill yeah, in the slot, is there no way the taxpayers himself can just be like, you guys aren't cooperating, whatever? We can't go and say. Well, I mean, you could, I guess, ask them to resign. We could call for yeah. a resignation. I guess. Just ask them, like, please resign. You're not doing your job, and we really need someone willing to work with mm -hmm. others, like on our behalf. Or even at the minimum, just say, hey, let's get some off on the road now, ASAP. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, if they don't, what then what? We were just back. back we can't do anything about it. Somebody new. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. Yep. Thanks. Looks like Hello, everybody. 281. If I'm reading the last I do. Well, I do have to get you all coming out. I mean, really, because it's you'd have to nice to give care of the price again. Yeah. Very much so. Something. I was thinking for the one position when I pulled up the abstract, sir. Well, there were 125 for John for John Gearing and 132 for Leo Navinsky. And then there's yeah, could you have for party side of things too, probably. What's that? Do you would you have to look at the party side because or would it just be that's that's a nonpartisan race, isn't it? Well, in the general, correct. That's why I was just trying to make sure yeah. my brain is trying to. Yeah. Well, that's two fifty seven, right? No, for the position. The two of them. For oh yeah, for both of them. Yeah, position, and then Joe Tolliver had twenty, so two seventy seven, and then one, two, three, four other. We're just getting right yeah. in. all of the options. Joe, we're not just between one or the Joe other. Joe Tolliver is in the district. Yeah. I'm trying to do all. Of well, because I'm not. He had right in. Oh, that's not. I'm in the wrong column. I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong column. Yeah, he's in Mount Pleasant. <laughs> so, yeah, you had 125 and 132, which would be 257. I think that's pretty close to what I estimated mm -hmm. uh, that I found. 
which would be 102.8. So 103 votes is how that would then on a petition because you round up because it's over the point five. Mm -hmm. Just saying. That's that's how I've always done it in the office when petitions are filed. Mm -hmm. So that would be for a trustee. Now let me look at treasurer numbers. Sounds good. But I don't see any Appreciate I don't see any writings. In oh, the addition to that be two eighteen landowners or living there. The electors. Taxpayers. The electors. So electors. Uh, electors in the Walnut Township. Registered Correct. voters who reside. who reside in the Right. Because I mean, there's landowners that don't reside yeah. in that, that are right. just as mad as we are. But yeah, they, they still pay taxes, though, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I agree. So, yeah. like, they're just a, mm -hmm. they can't vote there, but they're well, taxpayers there. So, they have a say. <laughs> <laughs> it's not where you live. Take it up with the legislature. <laughs> that's, that's their call. Okay. So, then if I'm right on treasure, it would be the 218. Is that what you were seeing on that abstract, Patrick? 218. And times 40% would be 87.2. So that would round down to 87 votes. And then 2022, correct, was the last election? Yeah, that's what I was <laughs> Okay. I was on the 2020 because it's every four years. So so I did the tr uh, trustee and the treasurer. Okay. I'm going to find what I'm looking for. So, so what's the process if we choose to petition? Mm -hmm. You, you need to prepare a petition. Um, and we could give some help with that, but if you're asking me to drop everything and do it right now, I no. do not do that. Just uh, but you need to prepare the petition, um, submit it to the county attorney for approval. Um, okay. The petition has to state the bases, the reasons for. Um, Does that include taxpayers or residents of the county? It, it includes electors of the township, so they have to be they have to be, they have to be registered to vote, and their registered address is in the township. Patrick, I have for 2022 for the clerk, it would be 170 votes times the 40 percent would be 68. There's no rounding necessary. So we'll have to. And again, I don't have that right now. One so. for each person. Well, there can only be one. And then it's going to be a race. There can only be one going at a time. Yeah. Um, so you got to pick one. And you to pick one. Please. Okay. On oh, your own one doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. That's true. Or you just get them both to click tonight. Mm -hmm. They won't show up. They're on medium. Mm -hmm. they Appreciate it. Yeah, I hope you have. You, hmm? you better pay them all the line. Okay. Somebody's Thank you guys home. for coming. Yep. I appreciate it. I'm dreaming. Like, I know. <laughs> bye. See you later. Oh, don't forget your jacket. Your jacket. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any counselor updates? I don't have anything. Okay. We have um, a non-elected executive session for 15 minutes. Um, mission. Sorry, Jody. Commission Jody and Wes Lander. Okay. Personal matters. Yeah. <coughs> 15 minutes. Yes. I move that the Board of County Commissioners recess into executive session at 1 55 p.m. to discuss personal matters of non elected personnel as allowed by KSA 75 4319B1. And that the purpose of the closed session is to protect the privacy rights of the employee and that the board come out of executive session in 15 minutes in the commission room, courthouse basement. And those present will be three commissioners Jody Moore, HR, and Wes Leonard. Uh, what about Pat and, Pat and Pat Anderson? Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. You'll cheer for tomorrow. Aye. aye. Let's do a different day. Passes I'll three let. to zero. I'll, let you, I'll, I'll go talk. Okay. 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 All right, we are back in open session. Any public comment? Okay. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the bills from this week? 
So moved. Okay, I will second. It's been, oh, oh, he just said second. Okay, he hasn't seen. Did we do the EMS report? Okay. I can't remember. Yeah, we did. We did okay. Yep. <laughs> so it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes. Since I didn't see him yet. Two to zero. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. I'll second. second. <laughs> I can second that one. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. We are adjourned. Okay.